come before your presence on this morning. Humbly as we know how, Father. We come to you early this morning. Will you touch us, oh Father God, to wake us up? For that old Father God, we want to tell you thank you. We want to glorify your name in the name of Jesus. You allowed us to get out that bed this morning. You allowed us to clothe ourselves. You allowed us, oh Father God, to be able to come into the sanctuary. We came in with a praise on our lips. We came with rejoicing in our hearts. On this morning, oh Father God, we ask it right now, before, oh Father God, we ask of anything, forgive us now. Forgive us now, oh Father God. Forgive us of our transgressions. Forgive us of our iniquities, oh Father God. But out of that, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus, if we have done anything, if I have done anything, oh Father God, in thy presence that is displeasing, Lord, forgive now. Forgive me now. Oh, Father God, I ask that you walk between the pews. Search out right now. Search the souls, oh, Father God. Search our very souls right now. If there's anything, oh, Father, that you find in us, take it out now. Take it out now, Lord. Take it out right now that we would worship you in trueness, in holiness, oh, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, bring the wandering minds in. Bring it in right now. That, oh Father God, that we will be on one accord. That we will sing praises to you. That we will honor you, oh Father God. That, oh Father God, somebody here now, under the sound of my voice, they're on the fence line, oh Father. They don't know where, which way to turn, they don't know which way to go. But, oh Father God, if we get on one accord, that your power will rain down from heaven. That their hearts shall be changed. That, oh Father God, we will see another miracle take place in this sanctuary. That, oh Father God, that their lives will be changed. That we will loose the grips of the devil. We pray right now, Father. Look on our speak of today. Bring a word from heaven, oh Father God, through your man serving on this Touch him right now, but strengthen his body. Keep hold of his mind in the name of Jesus. Now look on our pastor, our first lady, oh Father God. Touch their families, oh Father God. Touch their love cards, oh Father God. As we rebuke the enemy, oh Father God. And let us get behind his vision, the vision that you gave unto him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. And amen.
I will trust in the covenant of thy wings. For thou, O oh God, has heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God well. Overpass mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. We thank God for the best reading of his word. And we're calling now on our praise and worship to you for our service. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many really came to worship God? Hallelujah. Come on, if you came to give God the highest praise, come on, let's get on our feet. Come on, let's exalt the Lord for a few minutes. Hallelujah. It's a simple song. Hallelujah. It says it's all about you. Everything that we say, everything that we do, it's all about Him. Hallelujah. Come on.
saying about God. To catch hold of worshiping God. That we want to be able to see his face. To be able to be in his presence. While she was singing, I was in deep thought of what God would look like. But I had to look at myself and re-examine myself that I need to correct some things if I am not going to be in his presence. Those were not just mere words. Those were not just her singing. Those words touched my soul. That God is real. And that's the thing that we have to do to get in his presence. God is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. Not some. We got to stop minimizing God and the things that he can do. He wants us to get out of the way and let him be God. Too many times we get in God's way. We don't let him be God. That's why we go through the things that we go through. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. When Sister Corner said yes and stepped aside, God worked it out for her. And he would do the same thing for you. If you would just get out of the way and let the Spirit of God have this way. The Spirit is speaking. But is anybody listening? Is anybody listening to the word? On today, I stand to receive our offering. Our tithes and offered on the day. A seed offering. A blessing unto the Lord. We thank God for what he has already done. And we thank God for this gospel choir. We started this service all right. On this morning I have an offering from.
the fourth Sunday uh, of this month, we have none other than our Woman Day Annual.
meet with all the department leaders, meet with all the deacons, amen, to share some things with the division that the Lord has placed upon our heart. It is time, amen. I was watching the MF, MFA, uh, the wrestling, uh, the, the ultimate fight, amen. The guy will come and say, it is time <laughs> to hear from heaven on this morning. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall it come upon him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? It is time we hear from the Lord. Today we have an outstanding preacher, man of God. Man, I've been knowing, amen, since I've been at the St. Stephen Church of God in Christ since 1983. He's a native of SeaTac, amen, an active member of the community, person of Ella Donnie Gregory. He's been married to Sister Frazier Gregory for 44 years. He retired as a paying servant for over 38 years at the commissary. Amen. He's number 10 of the loving child of the, the late Margaret and Robert Gregory. He accepted the Lord as his Savior in 1977, over 44 years. He's a living witness that God will keep you if you keep your mind staying on him. He loved the Lord with all his heart, his soul, his mind. Amen. At one point, he served as a YPWW president. He served in a jurisdiction. Amen. As an adjutant of the Jurisdiction as well as the National Church. Amen. He used to show for Bishop Thomas around. And from time to time, he and his wife, is a faith record. Amen. They give us some honor selection to Virginia one. And they would lift our spirits. Amen. He loved to see that community. Graduate from First Colonial High School. And he loved his classmates. From time to time, they get together. He let me know what they're doing. Amen. I don't support one another, but to support SeaTac community. He's a businessman. Amen. He sells the company in water. Amen. The heritage store. Amen. On Laston Road. Amen. You hear from time to time singing along with his brother coming by the Congan Water. Amen. For the health of your body. Amen. He believes in health. Amen. Do the things that will enhance our spiritual walk with the Lord, but also things that will help nourish our body. Amen. He's going to deliver the word on today. Amen. And the Lord has ordained and called him to minister the word to us on today. He told me I had to leave early, but I come to serve those to him on today. Amen. That you in the Lord's house. Amen. You may not be able to open your business on today. We plan for a glorious, a last life of glory. And this feast of the Lord on today. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the elder Donnie Greg is coming to minister to us. Give me him to bring forth the word to God.
backbite in a knuckle. I genuinely love my leader as a Bruce W. Yes, sir. You know, Caesar had put out the proclamation or the edict that everybody should uh, be mindful of the pandemic. Proceed with caution. <laughs> Amen. In those areas where they told him to shut down, he shut down. Uh -huh. But then on the other hand, he said, proceed with caution. <laughs> <laughs> so how many can I get? You can get 10 this week. Hell, he was said, tell y'all come on out here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Lord. We're still praying to God. I'm going on the uh, revival line. Look at God got us doing and trying different things. Uh -huh. I was on, I was, I was, I, we, we were, they did a live revival on last Friday. And I, I, I sent my money. I came out here with my, my, my wife. We said we were going to watch it on the Holy Street. And I was listening to that sister Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking about the real. Resilience of a Christian. The relentless resiliency of a Christian. Christians that don't back up. Amen. 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 You might stop him in his tracks. You might can't go there or he might can't go far, but he'll stand still and mock town. That's right. This is what I've got to learn to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to learn how to give God the praise and Yeah. 
place where it was written, <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord yes, is upon me Hallelujah. because he has anointed me yes. to preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, yeah. to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of the sight to the blind, mm -hmm. to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable yield of the law. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And my simple word to you today is the resiliency of praise. Amen. Amen. The resiliency of praise. All right. You can be seated. That's the resiliency of praise. Is the idea of praising God in spite of, in spite of the circumstances. God still demands of us to give Him the praise. Amen. Whether you sing it up on the mountaintop or you're down in the valley. Well, I don't need to pray. God still expects the Christian to give him the praise. Because he said he clothed us in the garment of praise. Amen. And we got some pretty sick fashions and garments that's out here in the world now. There are three that come to mind when we think about fashion and garment and clothes. We think about Paris, France. The garment capital of the world. Yeah, yeah. Or we think about New York City. Yeah. Or downtown LA, what they call the garment district. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tommy Hill Fame. Yeah. Yeah. Nine West. Yeah. Water Martin. Pierre Cotty. Hallelujah. Just to name a few. Go and fall. Some of the great fashion designers. Oh, in these three places over the capital of the world. Yes. Amen. But those garments are temporal and seasonal. And I heard Jesus say, don't store up your hope and faith in this world where the moth do is corrupt. But God said, I'm looking for you to be adorned in the garment of praise. Yes. And if you put on Put on the garment of praise, you never have to worry about being out of style yeah. or being out of the sea. Yes, yes, where you go, you'll be in tune. Come on, sir. Awesome ball. Yes. To the church here. Yes. Yes. Well, in our text today, we find Jesus in the temple. But before he got to the temple, he was this day was already it was a perfect. Word that already had been about him 400 years before he came. That's right. Isaiah, who was a major prophet, they called him, not because he was greater than the minor prophets, but because his writing was long. Yeah. He wrote 66 books, and they called him a, a major prophet. Yeah. Amen. And not only that, uh, some call him the eagle eye prophet. Of the, the envisionary prophet. They, let, they look like God let him sit down in his mind where he could look across the canvas of the world. And he saw Jesus before he came. Hallelujah. Well, in the text of Isaiah, who talks about this day that I'm going to preach about. Amen. He was talking to a people who had backslidden against God. Israel, who were God's chosen people, amen, they had backslid and turned their back on God. And through Isaiah, God let Israel know that if you don't get it right with your stiff neck, I'm going to allow the Babylonians to come down and remove you from your first place. And so enough, God allowed the Babylonians to come into Jerusalem rape all of the girls and drove them out of the city and took them all down to Babylon. Hallelujah. And they burned Jerusalem. And they set it on fire. And they tore it down in the place. But God also let Israel know that not only am I going to drive you out of this place, 
a day is going to come when I'm going to bring you back. And while when they were in that condition of sadness, some went down by the willow tree where they hung their heart yes, because they were their captive demanded them to sing a, a sad song in a strange land. They said, how can we sing a sad song in a strange land? You don't know nothing about my God. Sometimes God will carry you to the bricks. He'll, 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 he'll snatch one of your uh, out of the palace and bring you back to tell you recognize him. Hallelujah. I've been in a place, hallelujah, I've been in a place where it looked like that I was all by myself. But thank God for Jesus. He gives me the strength. He gives me the fortitude and the resilience to hold on to my God. I heard you. 
Jesus there. And he came to 40 and two generations to save us from the clutches of the enemy.
that you criticize it in your spirit. And he is out of your fucking life. Oh, he's mean.
for his many blessings and for what he has done for you. Come on. Let's jump on here.
Ghost is not here when we're all gone this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen.